Morning. What are we talking about today, Doc? Today we're going to talk about soil testing. I'm over here in the woods behind the house because I've got my high pressure pump running because we're back to irrigating the fields. It's funny, we had seven week drought, then we had like eight days of rain every single day. Everything got super saturated. Now we haven't had rain for a week. So I'm doing some planting up there, but I'm also doing some soil testing. So today let's talk about soil testing. Uh, don't forget, I cover a lot of this in the lawn guides. They're up, they're free. There's three websites we built years ago. Over two million people have used them. Go to freelawncareguide.com. There's three websites, Bermuda, Zoysia, and Cool Season. Use them. Anyways, first of all, soil testing. I use Clemson University. I'll link on the page below, I will link to an online soil test that I've also done that's really easy for you guys. They'll send you a kit, you put your soil sample in it, send it off and then it's back in like you get your results in like five or seven days personally i use clemson for a couple of reasons number one i take pretty large samples because i have large fields and so i put them in these brown bags which i will show you uh, i'll show you how i dry them out it's a single sheet a lot of these a lot of these testing places make you fill out a sheet for every single sample and clemson doesn't do that that's why i use them because I can put all my samples on one, on actually one sheet. That's why I like it. I get my, this time of year, the other good thing about testing this time of year is the labs are usually not that busy. So I'll get my results back usually in seven to 10 days. But what am I testing for right now? I think that's a key thing. I'm really testing number one for pH. That's the primary thing. But I also want to see the treatments that I've done over the past two years, what changes have happened inside my soil. Now, if you follow my channel, you'll know that one of those fields is, or a lot of my fields are super high in potassium. I mean, off the chart high, where we couldn't get anything to grow on one of those fields up there. So we've been dealing with that. Hopefully we've got that down some by just planting and planting and planting. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I'm actually doing it. But the backyard over here, you remember the backyard over here that we've struggled with, which has all kinds of wood chips underneath the soil under there. It, the rain sits there when it rains and a quarter of an inch of water will just sit there and it's super saturated. Well, that lowers my pH. Last year, my pH was 4.9 back there, somewhere around there, and I did a lime treatment. So what I wanna do today is, um, why I'm doing it now is I wanna say, do I need to do another lime treatment? People will say, um, put down lime every year, and that's not the case. The only time you put down lime is if you do a soil test and if your pH is low, you put down lime to bring it back up, hopefully closer to a 6.0, at least 6.0. Uh, what else am I doing? I'm just running around, I'll string together some stuff, but I did want to mention, a lot of people ask, how come my soil test doesn't have nitrogen listed on it? Uh, nitrogen, the reason why we put, the reason why most fertilizers are like a high nitrogen number, like a 1648 or a 30, 510 is because nitrogen is extremely volatile. Nitrogen is the one nutrient that is actually going to move out of your soil very quickly, whether it's through, uh, we'll call it evaporation or just basically just uh, running off or whatever. So nitrogen has to constantly be put down. That's why we came out with stuff like Green Shocker, which is an uh, uh, all instant release fertilizer. We came out with DGL, which is dark green lawn, which is a fantastic small particle all fast release nitrogen. It's a great little light coat of nitrogen in the summertime that won't burn your lawn. Uh, if you're not putting down Dirt Booster, put down some Dirt Booster. I've said that, and you guys, I see a lot of you guys ordering it. It's a great time of the year to put down Dirt Booster or Humichar. I also put down a coat of PGF Complete out back, and I'll show you the backyard, and I'll show you the pond here in a second. But I really encourage you, a lot of people do soil tests in the spring, this is a good time because it'll give you a game plan to say, do I need to make any adjustments going into the fall? And that's really what you want to plan for. Uh, I, I, I planted two upper kind of fine, more fine Bermudas, Yukon and Monaco, I think it was. And finally, after all that rain, it started to take. John just came back today and cut it with a real mower. And you can see, man, what an improvement. It actually looks like, it actually looks like a lawn again. So a lot of this is all Bermuda. Now, I do have a plan B. If this starts to struggle, which I think it's gonna take and, and do fine out here, 
On the other side over there, for some reason, I have a lot of common Bermuda, and that common Bermuda is so thick and dense over there. So, if by some chance I have problems with this, I'm gonna switch it over to common Bermuda, the same I have on the pond. Um, I'm actually up there watering the fields. I'm in a minute, the other day I went up, took some soil samples. I showed you how I get them prepared for Clemson. I'll show you that. Anyways, let's go. All right, so I've got my soil sample. It's about, I'd say that's a cup and a half. And I'll take one of my soil sample bags. If I forget to link to something, please remind me, because I always do. I'll forget to the probe, the soil probe, the soil bag, just all by hand. And it fills up probably about just over, just under a half is what I'm trying to get. And so real important now, I'm just gonna do a light closing because I'm gonna open this up, put it in the sunshine or put it in a place that'll dry out for a couple days. So this is upper field. So all I'm gonna write is I'm gonna write U F, upper field. When I get to my sheet on Clemson, it'll say your code and I'll put UF and then I'll have a, I'll have a data sheet for that. It'll show me the pH. Um, it'll show me all the nutrients it will show me the CEC, the cation exchange capacity of it, how much organic matter. By the time they get the soil sample, the nitrogen levels are going to be off. The only laboratories in the world that do accurate, true nitrogen uh, testing are the ones that have a frozen system. So you take the soil, immediately freeze it, you ship it frozen, <laughs> and then they work it that way. That's the only way to lock up the nitrogen for an accurate reading, as far as I know. So this one is middle field, no comments, MF. <laughs> uh, one little tip I'll give you, it's so humid out here, just leaving these like out in the garage, typically open them up, it's, it's going to take days and days. So here's what I do. I get a paper plate and I'll write MF on the paper plate. I'll dump this onto a paper plate and I'll put it inside the house somewhere where no one will get to it. And within 24 hours, because the air conditioner is running, it'll dry this out in 24 hours, it'll be ready to go. That's just a little tip. All right, so I thought I must will show you this process. I don't have any rain possible till after 12 and it's nine o'clock. So I don't have any high winds. Uh, this area will get baked by the sunshine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start them out here and then I'll move them into the shed. But basically LF, I like to spread them out. That's the lower field. Man, that's such pretty soil. It really is cool just to observe the different types of soil. And that has that is so much better than everything else. The backyard sucks. The backyard is, even though it's darker, even though it's darker, it's just full of crap and sand and all right, upper field. We'll put the upper field. here and then this is the middle field there we go and I'll just let them like I said pretty soon pretty soon the Sun will just be baking down on these and that'll start that drying process but I do want to show you all right this is the upper field a lot of red clay in there see it this is the same thing this is the middle field a lot of red clay but look at this look at this lower field now this is the lower field we've been working for a long time and we've always had clover established in here man that's beautiful dirt there 
That is gorgeous. All right, so when it comes to using Clemson, I actually print there. There's a form online. Sorry, the cars. I'm at my end of my driveway. I print the form online. I put the samples in a box. I go to USPS, click and ship, and I send it priority mail, and I just drop it off in my mailbox, put the flag up, and I'm pretty much done. That's how I do it. So, but the easier way is to do that online test that they send you the sample kit. Anyways, guys, remember, get a soil test. Every single problem that you have generally starts in the soil. If you have bad grass, if you're having problems, something is going on in your soil. Don't forget, also treat for bugs this time of year. Get the double kill. I list that on the website too if you're having grub problems. And then in about another 30 days, get ready for armyworms because they're going to be coming. Doc. Mm -hmm.